So LG is back with a brand new device, the G8 ThinQ. Let's see how it compares against the Galaxy S10 in this video. So the LG G8 comes in as a very unique device. In the day and age where we have multiple SKUs like the Galaxy S10, the LG has one SKU, which has six gigs of RAM, 120 gigabytes of storage, and uh, it also power, is powered by the Snapdragon 855 processor. You can expand that storage up to two terabytes with micro SD, but that's pretty much it. The other thing to mention with the G8 ThinQ is that it comes packed with a 3500 milliamp battery. So this thing gives some really good battery life. I mean, LG has always done a good job in the past, and this I think really takes it to a different level. Now, looking at that Carmine Red here, and looking at the back of the device, we've got a very flush camera module. I mean, it's really flat flush on this device, and that houses two cameras, an ultra wide camera, camera and a standard camera. No triple camera here on this device, but the cameras do some really awesome things. You can go into the camera setting, I mean camera options, and use uh, YouTube Live directly from the camera app. So that is actually pretty cool. It's also got a dedicated night mode called Night View, which, you, which has a customizable slider on there as well. And we'll look at some of the photos from that later on. Plus, we do have, um, we do have something that's pretty cool, the ability to shoot portrait video. Yes, you can shoot video 4K in portrait mode on this phone and it looks pretty cool. It handles pretty well. And I think that's something a lot of people would like to use. Now, when we flip the device to the front, we've got a 6.1 inch display. It's a QHD display. It's got a notch, a standard notch, but that notch houses um, an eight megapixel camera and a time of flight sensor, which allows you to do a couple of things. So there are two more ways to unlock your device. One is using your hand, yeah, right here, because the time of flight sensor reads the hemoglobin off your palm. That's what LG says. Don't know if it's true or not, but it seems pretty secure because I've, no one else has been able to use their hands to unlock my device. But you can actually use this to unlock your smartphone. Um, and it's pretty interesting. You can also use it to take screenshots uh, as well and also control different applications. So I've noticed it's, it's, it's a bit slow, but I think it's something that if they improve could be really snappy and fast where you can just wave and unlock. I think that will actually be nice with this. But the other option, option uh, to unlock your device is facial unlock. It's super fast. And the time of flight sensor does really good much job at mapping your face. And I think it's more secure than what Samsung has because uh, you have that extra sensor there doing more work for you. So it's really cool because you can put it at a distance and it's still unlock your device or even bring it closer uh, to you. As I mentioned, that display is two point, uh, it's a 2K display. The display also it doubles as a speaker. Now, LG has the traditional boom sound speaker plus a crystal sound display. So what you're getting is audio from the speaker grill at the bottom of the device next to the USB Type-C port and off the display itself. So when you actually go ahead and cover the speakers, you're still getting audio from the display, which I think is really, really cool. I don't think it's as loud, but I think it's still really cool all, all the same. Now, another key feature that LG has is something that very few people can do on their smartphones is just down to audio again. They have a 3.5 mm jack. The Galaxy S10 has that too, but it's got a 32 bit quad DAC built in, which means you're getting some really insane sounds. I mean, it's really smooth audio all the way through. You can run high impedance headphones. A lot of the you know, high impedance stuff I have up there, you can use that on your G8 thank you. And I think that goes a whole way with this device. So there's a lot you can do with this here. It does have wireless charging. It doesn't have reverse wireless charging um, on this device, but it's got a lot of features that you can take on with. Now, moving over to the Galaxy S10. The S10 comes at 6.1 inches. It's a little bit shorter than the LG G8 ThinQ. And also a little bit thinner. A 3400 milliamp battery, the Snapdragon 855. You've got a, diff uh, a couple of different SKUs in terms of RAM. Oh, so in terms of RAM is eight gigs but different SKUs in terms of storage. Micro SD is there. Now you do have that triple camera set up at the back. And some of the cool camera features you do have is the fact that you can post directly to Instagram off the camera app, which is actually pretty cool. And the ultra wide lens is super wide. We'll see that in a second. Now the front facing camera is in that whole punch format. 
It looks pretty cool though. I do like this display. It is a lovely display, this uh, dynamic AMOLED display. Plus you have the in-display fingerprint sensor, ultrasonic, really secure. You can use your wet or oily hands to unlock your device with that too. Uh, and you do have the ability to reverse wirelessly charge another device. So of course, the Galaxy S10 has that feature and something a few devices do have. Uh, available right now. But let's go ahead and see how they both fare in terms of images. So starting off with images, with looking at the LG on the left, you can see this is the standard camera that it's much more of a flatter tone compared to the Samsung on the right, which has a lot of contrast, a lot of the dynamic range really showcases right here, but both images are really nice. Moving to the wider angle, the ultra wide angle lens, the Galaxy's wide angle lens is much wider. It's the widest on the market right now. And again, that contrast, that dynamic range really shows, but again, pretty good images overall. Now, when we go to uh, front facing uh, portrait photos, uh, the I do like the bokeh on the uh, LG with the TOF sensor, but it's edge detection really chops off the top of my head. I've tried this a couple of times as opposed to what we have with Samsung. Now, this is the rear uh, camera taking the portrait photo. Again, I think LG does a better job here uh, with the bokeh and also just with the imaging overall. Galaxy is nice, but I think I like the LGs here. When we move over to low light photos, this is just a city Escape here in New York. Uh, both photos are similar. Uh, LG's on the night mode. And this second photo, this is where it really uh, at least shines a little bit better. You can see the Wonder Woman image looks much better with the LG photo than the Samsung. It's still visible, but it's much brighter and clearer on LG's. Now, I just did a video recording. Both of them are 1080p. LG has a, uh, a setting called um, Steady Shot, that I um, uh, Video Steady, I believe is what it's called. So when I start running, you see how it takes into effect. It's not as good as Steady Shot, but it really does keep it calmer. And then there's this bouncing white light that was on the screen for a little bit, but you get the idea here, but it does record 4K 60 on this device um, as well. So there is a lot to go over with the Galaxy S10 versus the LG G8 ThinQ. I think the ThinQ brings a lot of features to it as a device that some the Galaxy does, doesn't have and vice versa. So let me know what you guys think and which you think is a better device. Remember, the Galaxy uh, S10 is priced at $899, 900 bucks, while the LG is priced at $819. So there is a clear uh, price difference here, uh, close to almost 90 bucks or so. So let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions or any comments, I'll leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this video. Favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment.